What is going on, my doggies? Welcome back to another video. Look at this. We have got a fire going. That was a super easy fire to start. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start up a little bit of a barista session. There ain't nothing like a coffee in the morning to start one hell of a mission, and that's what we're doing today. We are going on one hell of a mission. I'll tell you that. Ugh. Look at this. First things first, we've got to get a fire going, and I'm going to tell you guys exactly what is going on today. Why? I'm a little bit sad. I'm a little bit angry. I am very, very, very bloody tired. And um, this eat what you catch challenge, it is getting the better of me, I tell you what. All right, let's go get the billy. Have a look at this. Tell me a better way to start a day. I bet you can't. There is no better way to start a day than banging a billy on a fire just like this. Look at that. This is what it's all about right now. Billy on the fire. That's the way to start a day right there. Look at this, she's boiling already. That is what we want to see. I oh know, I oh know, I oh know. Oh man, get in me. All right, so the reason that I'm bloody tired, I'm bloody hungry, and I'm a little bit grumpy is because yesterday I set out on a mission trying to catch food and man, it was, it was so hard. I went to a brand new mangrove system, trying to get myself a feed and um, I just couldn't get it done. There was no good fish, there, were no, there was no crabs, there was nothing around. So I hunted crabs until 2.30 this morning. I drove, to, then I got in the car, I drove to this place. I've had two hours sleep, just woke up. We're back here, we're doing it all again. Today what I want to do is I want to go into a brand new mangrove system. We've got absolutely no food in the troopy right now. I want to see if we can get ourselves a little bit of food, breakfast, lunch and dinner. We've got no food in the car. What I would love to do, catch a massive mud crab for lunch and eventually at the end of the day, some point, shoot a shark with the bow and arrow. If I can shoot a shark with the bow and arrow, oh my God, man, that's one hell of a day. So that's the goal. Look, anything could happen right now. Anything could happen out here, but um, Things are looking up. We've got a coffee, we've got a beautiful little fire. Let's go. Next time I see you guys, we'll be in the mangrove system. We'll be shooting fish. We'll um, sh hunting crabs, shooting fish, and hopefully, eventually, we might get a shark with the bow and arrow. All right, doggies, I'm gonna have this coffee. We'll jump over the back there. We're running the mangrove system, and we'll see if we can get a shark with the bow and arrow and a little bit of grub on the plate. I'm starving. Ow. Tell you what, mate, this is deja vu from last night. We're going back into another mangrove system. As you can see, it is it is dead low tide right now. This tide's completely drained out, which is kind of in our favor for hunting crabs, but not so much bow and arrow. So we're just gonna go for a little crab hunt, see if we can find a monster mud crab in these mangroves somewhere. Hopefully we can get one under our belt. The problem, the problem that I'm going to have is, is that it usually takes the tide around six hours to turn around. So right now it's nine o'clock in the morning. It's a dead low tide. So what's that? Three, three o'clock in the afternoon. We should have a full high tide where this is going to be underwater. And that's when the little sharks come in. That's when the fish come into these mangrove systems. And that's the time where we can get the bow and arrow out and we can really use it to, our, to its potential. But until then, we're kind of waiting for tides and we we'll just walk around and look for some crabs. But like I said last night, I'd love to get a shark on the bow and arrow. Could be a little bit of a far-pitched expectation, but you just never know, mate. You just gotta be in it to win it, don't you? This is sick, though. It's a nice way to start the day. Coffee on the fire. Now we're walking around with a crab hook, trying to find some big dogs. Have a go at this. This is the perfect little place for a crab to live. Nice, big, deep hole there. Over here, you've got this massive knuckle. That's a big crab's knuckle. Obviously, he's, he's been fighting someone for this hole, or that's a big, that's not a bad sized knuckle of a crab. So, there's nothing, looks like there's anything sticking out, but. Oh, that's a crab. That is a crab every day of the week. All right, we've definitely got a crab in this hole. You guys can hear, you can hear that through the stick. That's hitting, the, that's hitting the back of his shell. All right, we've got a crab in here. Let's see if he wants to play the game. Let's see if we can get him out. Oh, 
Oh yes, that's what I'm talking about, baby. That was easy. Oh, come here, come here. Look at that. That is beautiful. That's what we come for, that's a donkey. He is a beautiful, beautiful crab. About bloody time too. Look at this thing. This is the reason I'm walking around here. That is the finally, we finally have got ourselves a little bit of grub. He's a big boy. He's a big, beautiful crab. Check that out. Big purple, blue color claws. Look at that. That is the business right there. Those things will mess you up, man. He's a big crab. Big, beautiful male. You can see he's a buck from underneath there. He's a beautiful crab. This thing is going to be bloody amazing. Took some serious time to catch him, but we finally got him. Look at that. He's a lovely crab. The strength in these things is phenomenal, man. That thing is like ripping my arm in right now. He's going to go real good on that little fire we made up on the bank there. Beautiful crab. We're chucking him in my backpack with a little bit of a little bit of a more to walk while this tide's low. We'll see what else we can find. But that is, I'll tell you what, mate, my mouth's watering right now. My favorite, my favorite food in the ocean, right here, right now. All right, we'll keep punching on, see if we can see anything else out here. That is a bloody beautiful way to start the day. That's breakfast. Oh. Yeah, the first piece of food of the day. That is an oyster. Extremely random, random place for an oyster to be growing. There isn't really many, and there's a tiny one here. But that thing is a slob of an oyster. That is going to be the very first thing we eat on this mission. That is going to be a bloody delicious. And we find one of my favorite things to eat again. <sighs> things are looking up. I'm going to get into that right now. How good is that? Just a random oyster just sitting on the reef here. Look at him. It's not a bad size too. <clears throat> yes. Oh, that's a slob inside. Check this out. Make sure you get all of that big juicy bits of meat there. I don't know, we'll just go give him a wash. There it is, big, beautiful, juicy oyster. Have a look at that thing. That's a nice little treat right now. Oh man. Love it, I absolutely love them. Mm. Matt, if we can find a couple, oh, that's really good. If we can find a couple more of them, I'll be a happy boy. That's so sick. All right, one oyster, one oyster, one crab. Let's keep trucking. All right, check this out. I wanna show you guys a little bit of a trick when you get a crab. This is just a random, this is just a little bit of mangrove stick. What I'm doing is I'm just shaving the ends off of that stick into a little bit of a point, just so that just so the stick tapers down, just like that there. What you can do when you get a crab, this is a pretty bloody interesting thing, right? The crab claw actually, well obviously the crab claw opens and closes. What you can do is, you can grab the crab's claw like this, okay? You're gonna shut it, pinch the crab's claw shut, like that. Then you're gonna grab this stick, which you've just tapered down, and you're gonna stick it in the top of the crab's claw like this. It doesn't hurt the crab in any way, it's just a little opening there. But now, once that, crab, once that stick is in that crab's claw, it actually stops the claw from having being able to open. So right now that crab claw is completely shut. I can handle this crab however I want and that stick is stopping its claw from opening up. See that there? So now you can let your kids play with the crabs. You don't have to tie them up. The crab can freely run around and um, that stick there, all it's, all it's doing is stopping the opening part of the claw there. So pretty nifty thing. Very, very, obviously that's not my, I didn't come up with this. I was showed this by someone, but that's a bloody game changer. What they actually do is, this this crab's dropped his other claw, unfortunately, but that's all right, it happens. What what they can, what I was shown is, they actually snap the back leg of the crab off. So they snap off this little leg, they'll grab the leg, and they'll stick it in the top of the claw there, and it stops the crab being able to open. It's not in any pain right now, it doesn't hurt the crab. It's just, it's just like tying our elbow from here to here. We wouldn't be able to open our elbow because there's something locking it. Same as using a stick, so. That's not a bloody bad little method when you catch a crab, you can stick a stick in there like that. It's not in any pain, and um, it's pretty bloody good. It's very nifty. There we go. 
is a beautiful crab. Let's keep pushing on. That is a pretty bloody nifty little way of keeping his claws shut, but it's not bad at all. We'll chuck him in the backpack and we'll, um, we'll keep pushing on. Let's see if we can grab something for breakfast, something else for breakfast. This crab, I'm very happy with this crab. My mouth is literally watering right now. I think what I'm gonna do is, we're just gonna head straight back to where we had that fire and we had a coffee, start that fire back up. We're gonna cook this crab. Man, it's gonna be so good. I'm so bloody hungry. I'm very excited about eating that beautiful crab. And then what we'll do is it's gonna take a little while to cook the crab, get a fire pumping and stuff. So by the time we do that, this, what you see here, is gonna be completely full of water. The tide is gonna completely, but where I'm standing right now, it'll be about chest deep. Maybe even a little bit deeper on the high tide. So this water is gonna start rushing in as we're cooking that fish. So hope, uh, cooking that crab. So hopefully it works out, it all, it all pans out quite well. By the time we finish eating, or should I say destroying this beautiful crab for breakfast, this is gonna be full of water. We'll be able to get the bow and arrow, we'll be able to come back in, and then we'll have a little bit of fun with the bow and arrow. This is gonna completely fill up with water very soon. Man, I'm so, just the fact that I, that I know I've got a crab in my bag makes me happy, dude. Literally, mouth is watering right now. All right, let's go kick a fire in the ass. This is too good. All right, so the way that we're gonna boil, the way that we're gonna cook the crab today is we're gonna boil it in salt water over the fire in this big juicy pot right here. But the, the issue is right now is getting salt water. The tide is completely at its lowest point right now. It's about a kilometer walk that way before I can even find any water. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get this little shovel. We're just gonna take one or two spadefuls of, or shovel heads full of water out of here, or sand should I say. Just make a little bit of a hole like that and then we'll just let that water settle this water is going to settle and there's going to be a place for me to grab water from because right now as you can see the sides and sides it's completely bone dry let this water settle for about two seconds and we'll um get enough salt water in here to cook our crab look at that mate Tell you what, that beats walking a kilometre that way to go and get salt water and then walking a kilometre back with a big heavy bloody big container of water. We don't want too much water because I want to boil it as quick as we possibly can. We only need about 100 ml of water in the bottom of that pot. We're only cooking the one crab, so it's probably just about enough water there. I might grab a little bit more, but it's as simple as that, mate. A little bit of salt water. Didn't even have to walk far from the car. Oh, that's bloody hot. All right, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do the old tent peg trick. Bang tent pegs right in the middle of your fire. Sort of keep them as high as you want, but basically what this is gonna do is, whoo, that is hot, man. That's gonna be a platform for our water to sit on. So we can get as much oxygen, as much airflow as we can underneath that pot there, just like this. This is probably one of the quickest ways to cook if you had a frying pan or you were doing anything out in the bush. You put stuff or little little steel tent pegs like this over your fire or in your fire. It's super stable. That's gonna sit there. That gets a whole lot of airflow going underneath there. And then you can just feed sticks in it the whole entire time, get that fire boiling, get that fire roaring. Look at that. All right, we'll chuck a couple of sticks under there. That fire's gonna light up. We're gonna have boiling water in absolutely no time.
All right, now we can officially say welcome to the field day kitchen because we are now not only cooking a mud crab, we're getting bloody experimental out here. That water is boiling over there on the fire. That's not gonna take too long at all. When you use those 10 pegs to hold it off of the coals, you get a lot of heat happening under that bloody little um, billy that we're using and the water boils very, very quickly. So that's not gonna take too long over there. But what I've just done is I've come into the troopy. I've just opened up all my food drawers, trying to find something to go with the crab. We are bone dry, man. We ain't got no food in the car, but what I did find is I found a little thing of coconut milk and I found a good old trusty backup jar of Vegemite. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to make a dipping sauce. Mud crab alone is one of the most incredible tasting creatures in the sea. But when you got a little bit of a dipping sauce and you can dip that big lollipop into a dipping sauce, how? That is what it's all about. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a coconut cream and Vegemite dipping sauce. I'm gonna mix these two together in this little stove down here. And um, we could be coming up with something really good right now. We could also coming up, be coming up with something really horrible, but I, I highly doubt that. Vegemite is tip top, coconut cream is tip top, and look, crabs, you don't, you don't get anything better than a mud crab. So I'm gonna make a little sauce down here. By the time I do that, that water will be ready. And then um, we're, we're cooking crabs. I'm so excited. Oh. Look at this, Vegemite dipping sauce, man. This could be next level. Look at the color it's going. It's going like a chocolatey color. Slowly melting away. Look at that, that didn't take long at all. That water is boiling. We've got a handful of incredible mud crab here. I'm gonna plonk him straight in the pot. Ready, set, way. Oh, the body's going in, way. The claw, yeah, doggies, that is what it's all about. Oh my God, we're gonna be eating good. Don't freak out if the bloody crab legs are moving. It's just its nerves, the crab's dead. There's always someone in the comment section, eh, the crab's alive. Man, what do you think I am? I love animals. All right, fire is pumping, crab is cooking. Life is good, baby. All right, let's go back and attend to this busted ass sauce that we're making. That crab's gonna take about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes on the boil, and it's gonna be. Hey Siri, start a 12 minute timer. 12 minutes, starting now. Cheers, darling. Here we go, check this out. I've got two saucepans right here, both full of goodness. This one here is coconut cream with Vegemite, brought to the boil, simmered down, look at that. That is our Australian, this is gonna be called the new Australian dipping sauce. In this pot we have, well you guys know what's in there, that's one of the most beautiful bloody things in the ocean. Let's see if we can crack open one of these big lollipops, have a go at the size of that claw. That's, that's what it's all about, man. Let's pop him open, see if we can get a feed out of him. Here we go. Aha, uh -huh. ready? You know that it's cooked to perfection when it pull, pulls away like that. That right there is a massive chunk of meat. Oh man, look at this. This is gonna be that good. Favorite, just wanna bust that little bit of the shell there. Us, us. There we go. All right, let's give this dipping sauce a run. That is a massive chunk of meat. That is a busted ass dipping sauce right there. Let's do this. Vegemite coconut cream dipping sauce. Ready, set, cheers doggies. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Oh my god. Flavor bomb. This is flavor stations. You're kidding me. That's actually not that's actually not bad whatsoever. Look at this. How bloody good. Oh man. Oh. Wow. Oosh. Let's see if we can get this out perfectly. Ah, here we go. Come on, come out. Oh, yes. Look at it. Look at that. Here we go into the bloody dipping sauce. Mate, that is what it is. Look at that, man. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, my God. You don't understand. Cooking the crab in the salt water. Usually I like to put a crab on the coals, you just whack it straight on the coals, but cooking him in the salt water, honestly, you just get that salty flight. Well, it's just a lot saltier. It's just so good, man. Ay! Oh. Ready, watch this. Lollipop coming at you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Straight into the Vegemite. Straight into the big gob. Mate. It was worth every single second of waiting for this crab. Honestly. Tell you what, mate, you're not eating crab properly unless you're slurping. You're making slurping sounds. That's the only way to eat crab. I'm not leaving any. Man, this is I'm eating the legs. I'm not leaving any meat out. It is so good. These flies are thick, man. These flies are everywhere. They're hectic. They can smell it too, eh? I don't bloody doubt them. It's bloody beautiful. All right, what I'm going to do is I'll just sit here, knock the rest of this crab off, and then... um. We've got to wait for that tide to push in. Still got probably about two hours before that tide's even fishable. So we'll just give it a little bit of time, wait for that tide to push up, then we'll get the bow and arrow out. We'll go back out into the mangroves and we'll see where the afternoon takes us. So good. Now that I've got food in my stomach, mate, we've, we're, we're, we're on. I might make another quick coffee, sit back for a little bit, and then um, we'll punch back out there, get the bow and arrow, see if we can plug a shark or a big mullet for dinner. That's the go. That is the plan. Right now, I'm really, really enjoying this crab. So good. Mmm, nah. Look at this. There's a massive school of mullet right there. Just behind on the back of that tree, there's a big school of mullet sitting right there. I couldn't sit in the car anymore. I'm sitting in the car sweating my tits off. I was like, man, I'm just gonna get the bow and arrow and start walking around. You can still see here, this mangrove system still hasn't filled up with water yet. It's coming, but it's starting to lick the edges of the mangroves here, which means it's gonna start filling up very fast, very soon. But there's a lot of fish coming in with this tide. I can see sharks out there. I don't know if you've seen that fish jump. There's a fish splash. It is all happening. I can see three shark fins over there. Oh, we're on here. If we can plug a shark with a bow and arrow, that is, that is good, man. If not, we'll see if we can get a mullet or something else for dinner tonight, but have a look at this. The ocean is just alive, man. It's fully alive right now. Look at this. Look at this. There is just hundreds of whiting and trumpet are swimming around down here. At the back there, you can see shark fins. Look at the conditions. It is off its head. Little shark fins are all floating around out the back out there. They're going to be too hard to shoot, but, um, when they come in close, they'll be a nice, nice target. Heaps of big mullet just here. Look at that. There's a little shark right there, actually. Look at that shark. I'm going to put the GoPro on my head. Oh, 
there's another shark. Look right there. Look at him. Oh, look at this for a shot. Ready? I would have smoked that thing just then. I won't do it though. We'll wait for the right time. All right, we've got three sharks up here. One, two, three. This one's a little bit too small. Look at him. He's coming right in at me. Look at this. Oh, that's a good one out there. That's a good shark out there. I'll take him. There's no shortage. This is so sick, dude. This mangrove system right now is alive. It is, it is like on fire right now. There are baby sharks absolutely everywhere. There are mullet, there's grunter, there's a massive flathead. Very basically like every kind of like small fish that would come up and push up into the mangrove system on high tide, they're here right now. It is off its head. But I've only want to take one shot and I want to be selective. So I'm not just going to start shooting fish for fun. I just want to get one more fish for dinner and then um, that this video is a wrap. I'll be so happy, man. All we're going to get is a fish for dinner. Ideally, I'd love a shark. Now, there are so many sharks cruising around in the shallows, but they're all about they're all about 300 to 400 mil long. They're a little bit too small to shoot. I'd love something a touch bigger. So if we get the opportunity, we're going to run with that. But if not, there's a couple of big mullet around. Mullet are beautiful eaten when you put them in the coals. We'll just keep a keen eye out. But it is just alive, man. There is just stuff going on everywhere right now. It's only just started, the water's only just started to trickle in. That water you can see in the background there, it's about ankle deep and it's full of fish, man. Sick. We'll keep cruising around. Hopefully we get the opportunity at a shark. Oh, it's gonna be so good if it happens. Oh, this is sick. Look at this. Oh man, here we go. Come closer, come closer to me, big dog. Come closer, come closer. That's right, come closer. Oh, no way. Oh, that was a big, big diamond. Um, that was a big silver diamond bloody mullet. I should have just taken my time then. Too excited. That was a big diamond mullet. Hooey. He was a big dog. Big black one. Ah. There's no shortage of fish out here though. First shot of the day. <sighs> no good. Let's keep pushing on. It is happening right now. I can see dinner. I can see the most perfect shark. Ah, get me through here. I can see the most perfect shark. It's about 15 meters up here. What I gotta do is I just gotta really come slow. What they do, what I notice they do is they do big circles on these open patches. So I'm just gonna slowly sneak up on this shark. It's perfect size. It's about 600 mil long, 550, 600 long. Perfect eating size just for me. This is sick, look at this. Okay, here we go. It's just cruising around out there right now. I'm gonna chuck you guys on my head and um, I'm gonna stash myself up in the mangroves and see if we can pull, a, pull this off. Oh, there's two there. Okay, there's one of them's perfect size eating shark. I'm gonna put, put you guys on my head and see if we can land this shot. It's just, it's about 15 meters away at the moment. It should come towards me. All right, all right, all right. Head, head GoPro's going on. Check this shit out. Hey, hey, hey. All right, we've got a shark on here. That was a crack shot. We've just smoked a shark. Oi, oi, oi. We've just pumped a little shark. Beautiful eating size. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Oh, we did it. Oh, are you kidding me? Look at this little thing. You've got to be joking. Wait, let me put this bow and arrow away. Look at this, man. You're kidding. You can stay there, stay there. Check this out. We came out here to pump a shark with a bow and arrow and look at this beautiful little thing. This is a really, really good eating size shark. He is beautiful, man. It's about 600, 700 mil long. Look at the, look at the gob on him. That's the business end of these sharks. He has tiny little pincer teeth, but they are razor sharp. 
I reckon when I was trying to pull that arrow out of the water, he um he was trying to spin around and trying to bite me, but bloody good, so we, so we should have. But have a look at those teeth, mate. That is the business end of a little shark. Razor, razor sharp teeth. We've just smoked this thing with a bow and arrow. That's so sick, mate. This is called a common black tip shark. So you can see the black tip there, black tip on its tail. Not a bad eating shark, especially when they're fresh. They don't taste too bad whatsoever. And they're, they are prolific in here. There's hundreds of them. They're just not easy to shoot. They're super spookish. You've really got to like pull back in the mangroves like we did just then. We sort of sat back in the mangroves, wait for him to come to us. And then uh, we just executed that shot perfectly. Second arrow, this is the second arrow to leave the bow today. First one, we missed that monster mullet. Second one, we hit this shark perfectly. The arrow hit him in the top of the body right there. Beautiful, beautiful shark. He's gonna be a nice chewing later on. He is completely asleep right now, obviously. He's dead, he can't feel a thing. But he's a beautiful little shark. Stoked, he's gonna taste real good, man. We're gonna cook that up for dinner. We still got a little bit of sunlight left, so I reckon what I'll do is, I'll just keep punching around this mangrove system, see maybe we'll see if we can put a mullet and a shark together on the fire for dinner. Um, I'm not too sure, but that there, beautiful, beautiful little shark. Look at his little jaws, man. That's sick, mate, epic. All right, let's keep punching around. Mission complete, doggies, we did it. Tell you what, this could be a world record right now. Well, it is a world record right now. We've had three fires in one video. That's 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 out of control, man. We've had a barista session this morning. We've caught the most incredible bloody mud crab. We cooked him up before, and now we're about to cook up some beautiful fresh shark for dinner. That sun is pumping down. I've had one hell of a day, man. This has been super fun. You know what? It's not over yet. We're gonna cook some beautiful, beautiful fresh shark. Shot. With a bow and arrow, of course. All right, inside this bag here, we have beautiful, beautiful fresh shark fillets. Look at this. I've just made these incredibly beautiful little shark bites. That's shark. I had a little bag of Tandako seasoning, which is basically just flour, salt, herbs and stuff. So that's what we've put on the shark. That's all we've got. Oh, look at this. I'm just gonna dust it into this, chuck it into this pan. Well, look at this, it looks that good. Oh, listen to that sizzle. Beautiful fresh shark. Literally swimming around like 40 minutes ago. Doesn't get much fresher than this. Boom. 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 Couple of minutes on one side, couple of minutes on the next. Look at that, bro. That is golden brown goodness. Hubba baba man. That's looking that good, actually. That's gonna be like crispy, crunchy, beautiful, fresh shark. Shot with a bow and arrow. There's the big troop dog, the sun's setting over there. Oh man, life is pretty good, eh? Just wanna live for, eh? Just doing this right here. Look at that little system we got going on there. Stop it. That won't take too long, doggies. They're gonna be eating dinner. Have a look at this man. This is a plate of the freshest shark meat ever. It doesn't get any fresher than that. Look at this. These golden brown little fish bites or shark bites should I say. Man, these things are gonna be bloody good. That sun is just about to pump down over there. We got a little tray of fish. Today was super fun. Last night was hard work, today was fun. This is what it's all about. If you get the chance, get outside, try to gather, your, gather yourself a little bit of food. It's the best man, check this out. Little shark bites for dinner. On a sinking sunset. Where else would you rather be, mate? This is living. Oh, wow. Shark is something that is really, really bloody tasty if you cook it right. Look at that. White, juicy flesh. Oh, 
That's incredible. All right, doggies, you know the rule. Much love, I'll see you in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. Love each and every one of you. Much love. Super. So funny when you eat crabs, it's like, it's like human vacuum, eh? You're not eating crabs probably if you aren't making slurping sounds. That's the truth. If you guys want to make this dipping sauce, it is extremely complex. Get your notepads, get your pens ready. What you need is, you need a scoop, one teaspoon full of Vegemite. You need one jar of coconut cream. And you've got to be outside in the bush. That's it, man. It is actually really, it's actually really bloody good. I'm going to call it the Aussie dipping sauce. Honestly, that's all we had in the car, but it's pretty, it is actually really good. It's not bad at all.